PMP community, thank you so much for having us. For those of you who have not heard of Learning Pathways before, this is one of our open source solutions. It's also a template out on the lookbook that helps you train your end users um, with end user training content that you can customize as well within your SharePoint ecosystem. And so uh, we've got a couple updates around. Derek's going to do a demo. The reason we're here together is because it is an open source solution, which uh, we all embrace and love. We thought we'd start with a little levity here with the Monty Python reference in, uh, the, in the Holy Grail. There's a scene where you know some folks are asking to bring out your dead, bring out your dead. And, and um, one of the, the characters goes, I'm not dead yet. We've got a lot of those types of questions from a learning pathway space with respect to Viva Learning. Hey, what's the story? There's a Viva Learning um, solution coming out. How does it how does it pertain to Learning Pathways? And so we just wanted to clear the air, get out there with the community a little bit that, look, all of the content that is flowing into Learning Pathways is also flowing into Viva Learning. We are building a bridge behind the scenes where if you've invested in Learning Pathways, then Viva Learning is actively working on integrating that content into Viva Learning. And so why is that interesting? Well, if you created a bunch of customized content in Learning Pathways, we want to build a bridge for that content into Viva Learning. So that's the strategy. It's coming. As you can see, that's one of the Ignite slides for Viva Learning on the right. Um, and uh, it's something that we're actively working on. And so if you have customer questions, I would say, and, and customers are asking, or your, or your clients or your peers are asking, hey, you know, wh which one should I use? If it's just straight consumption of the, the user content itself, lead with Viva Learning. If you have customized content, if you're building solutions on learning pathways, then stick with learning pathways and leverage this integration as your bridge to then expand the exposure of that customized content into Viva Learning. And so Derek's going to show an awesome uh, demo of some of the things that we've been working on together and how you can actually create some custom content, which we believe is pretty easy to do. We've made a couple updates from the content side. There are some edge, some collaboration um, updates that came out in September. We're keeping that content flow rolling. There are some updates that have rolled out in the December timeframe, which I believe should be live any second now. I think it's coming out this week if it hasn't already been posted. Derek, remind me there. The December update, uh, we updated imagery for all of the for all of the products that you'll be seeing today as well as uh, a few of the descriptions like Mike had listed here, we changed those things and the success center. We also released a, a point release to fix a couple of bugs in the code. So we updated the web part to 4.3.1. So we're, we're keeping to our quarterly schedule um, of, of updating the content. And generally, although I was a little lax with that in September, I think um, due to Ignite and uh, the other uh, airlift, we try to make some kind of community statement when we do the update so that folks are aware of the new content that's coming in. Awesome. And my last plug before I will hand it over to Derek to do some awesome demoing is, hey, we're working on Viva Suite content as well. Um, so folks have been asking for that. Um, it's, it's in the works. Uh, it should be on the way. My hope is early Q1. Of, of next calendar year is hopefully when we'll have that content starting to flow out. So just a heads up that we're working on it and it's coming. And with that, I'll hand it over to Derek. Great. Yeah, we are working at trying to make the um, make the content updating a little quicker than quarterly, but we wanna make sure that when we make a commitment to the community to update the content that we actually stick to it. So we, we wanna make sure that you know we we're we're being true to to the community and make sure we're we're delivering on our promises. So, okay. So as far as the look, uh, as far as um, learning pathways goes, I know it's been out there for a little while, but it's always helpful to to sort of share some of the basics with folks. You know, as Mike said, you know, learning pathways is an open source solution. It is a micro learning solution. So you can use it to get product training, product information, product learning, but also use it to enhance your own um, your own internal learning at your company or wherever your clients where you're installing it. So there's two ways to install learning pathways. Number one is to do it manually. So to install the SharePoint, the SPPKG file 
and run some PowerShell to configure it properly and all of that. There's documentation for that on in our repo, and I'll share that at the end. We also have a lookbook template. And so if you've gone to the lookbook before, you can see um, if you click see examples, you get lots of great cool templates that you can use. But under solutions, the really cool one that we're going to talk about right now is learning pathways. So if you click on that, you get to see how we did it, an example of what it looks like, and then you can use it to actually add it to your tenant. And it provisions everything automatically, including all the multilingual capabilities. And that's really the cool thing is that um, you can use learning pathways in 10 different languages. Don't quiz me and ask me what all 10 of them are right now, but when you provision through the lookbook, all 10 of them get provisioned right away. We're going to take a look at this. This is the site that gets provisioned once the lookbook finishes its process. So you can see it gives you some some sort of this is sort of your training center, if you will. And so you can click in, you can click getting started. And this gives you a this is a SharePoint page, essentially. But what the magic is, is this web part down here at the bottom, which is the learning pathways content viewer web part. And this shares with us. This is what we call a playlist called steps and this this has a several different assets and it walks you through the process of and then so you can sort of click through this has a video in it um, you can do all the different assets and get the information all of this content that Microsoft provides is coming to us via an iframe through either docs.microsoft.com or support.microsoft.com so you can click through and the site that provisions sort of gives you a bunch of different ways to slice and dice the content. So here's the work remotely page. You're viewing just the work remotely content. Um, when Mike was talking, he was talking about the content. As, I, as he said, it's generally updated quarterly, although we are looking to update that. The beauty of leveraging the Microsoft related content is that we do all the translation for you so you know in this instance where you know we're working we're looking at work remotely with microsoft you don't from english to chinese to russian to italian spanish um so we take care of that all for you and then your users who are who are working in those different languages can can actually see native speaking content Okay, so the other thing you can do is really tailor the content. So there's a lot of content in here. And if you click on the Microsoft training page, you actually get to see a lot of the different topics worth of training that we've got. And you can see sort of all the different content, but you can also configure the web part to just drill down to a very specific uh, set of content. So say your IT department wants to just offer training on how to use different products in the Microsoft Office suite. So we've got Outlook, we've got OneDrive, we've got Word, we've got Sway. You can show all of that content right here. But what happens if, for instance, your company doesn't use Sway? You don't want people to learn about Sway. You can come into the administrative section and you can click in here. And this offers us a look at sort of all the content all up that's coming in from Microsoft. And it's categorized in these different sort of scenarios that we call these categories. So we've got um, the categories. These things over here on the right are subcategories. And then these little items here are called playlists. And then inside of each one of those are called assets. So we're going to scroll down under products and we're going to find Sway. We're going to scroll back up. And so you can see here are the four playlists that are attached to the Sway subcategory. Well, we don't want anybody learning about Sway right now. So I'm picking on, on Sway. So if it's important to somebody, I apologize. Um, but we're going to go back to our site. And we're going to the amount of time to take me to click over here. And we're going to go back to Office 365 and start it. It didn't work. <laughs> Um, this does cache all the data. So oh, now you can see the cache refreshed and now Sway is gone. So you can sort of use it to tailor meet the needs of your organization. Um, the cool thing though, and as Mike was talking about, if we go back in our administration section is you can also provide custom learning of your own stuff. So 
For instance, under scenarios, I added a subcategory called finance. I added this myself and you can show it, you can hide it, you can edit it, you can give it a custom image if you'd like. And I attached a, an expense report playlist to this. So imagine you're using Concur or some other large software and you need to provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to submit and add your expenses. So I came in and I added a new custom playlist. These are the new iconography that we've just changed over. Um, it's a little more colorful and is a little more descriptive of the different pieces here. So I gave my playlist some data and then I added assets. So I added an expense reporting guidelines, creating a new expense report, submitting and approving. And then you can reorder them, change the order of them. But what if I want to add a new one? So I can add a new one and I can call this one rejecting. I could give it a technology if I wanted, um, but we have two options here. So we can either create an asset, which is going to create a page right here in the SharePoint pages library, or we can add a URL to an existing page. Either way, that content gets iframed in. Um, so if you wanted to link to something that was in a custom knowledge base, you could definitely do that and use this as a micro learning tool for your custom homegrown piece of software. Um, so if you click create asset, it actually generates the URL for you, it generates the page, and then you click save asset. And then you can go back into the pages library and you can add content. So what does that look like on, you know, on, in from a use case perspective? So here's an example of the finance home site that we have. And this is just an intranet site for the finance department. They've got their end of year finance deadlines. They've got their onboarding stuff, but we've added a link here called finance training. So if we click on that, we've got some instructions on how to use the how to's and we have a list here. So this is a list when you configure the web part, you can configure it to either filter on a category, a subcategory or a playlist, or even down to the individual asset level. So here I went ahead and I, I filtered it by subcategory and I chose finance. So now this is just going to show any of the playlists that are attached to finance, to that finance section that we had before. So now, fiddly do, we click on expense reporting, and now we can see our expense reporting guidelines. We can click through the process of creating a new expense report. We can see the content, we can click next, we can see how, oh, how do we submit that report? How do we approve that report? Now I didn't actually create the reject page, but you get the concept is that now we can go through. The other thing is if you are that finance person and somebody asks you, hey, Derek, I'm trying to figure out how to approve an expense report, you can actually just copy this link and you can send them that link and then they go to the viewer page and they can see the whole thing. The only other thing that I will say is this is an open source project. Um, and we love to have contributors. There are a few issues in the issues list. If you are interested from a dev perspective, um, I've marked quite a few issues as uh, great first issues. So if you'd like to take a crack at those, let me know. And if you have any questions, comments for issues, learning pathways, please put them in the issues list. We monitor that all the time. I'm in there every single day. So thank you and have fun. Awesome. Thank you, Derek. Thank you, Mike. Excellent job. Appreciate that. Thank you.